So hi, everybody. We are with Wendy Taylor. She is the chair of the program Criminal Justice. And Wendy, thank you so much for accepting this invitation and help us to clarify a question or two. So I want to pinpoint three big areas I think that are most interesting for our students. One is the academic. The other are general, general information about criminal justice and jobs. That will be the third one, okay? okay. So let's start. Okay. Okay, great. What is criminal justice? The criminal justice program at Camosun uh, focuses on all areas within the system that deals with people in conflict with the law or the prevention of uh, conflict or you know preventing crime for example we often forget the prevention side so we look at any individuals it also explores law and the area of law and then we look at also corrections you know and corrections can be probation officers parole officers those in the field and we also look at the whole process of how matters of law or crimes for example get processed through the system so we look at uh, for example victims of crime and the impacts of crime on victims we look at for example restorative justice alternative ways of justice that our justice system is changing so we try to cover everything within two years <laughs> okay <laughs> so it's it's a lot but just getting on the track if a student wants to pursue a bachelor, if that's possible, if they study criminal justice with us? Right, if they join the criminal justice program, they would do their first two years, uh, their 60 credits with us. And we have agreements and there's um, with other universities that students transfer and do their last two years to complete either a justice studies degree, a bachelor in criminology, a bachelor in criminal justice, a number of different areas. Some of our students pursue other fields such as law. Some of them go into, they do an additional year or, or finish their post-secondary and go into law. Some of our students transfer to other universities and study psychology to complement the criminal justice degree as an example. Thank you. Why do you think a international student would study criminal justice? We've had many international students in our program and if I can just sort of share their perspectives, you know, I think why people commit crimes what happens when people are in conflict with the law? Why do we have laws? How are they made? Um, you know, what happens through the justice system? What are the different career opportunities that you can be involved in in the justice system? There's so many, it's so diverse. And I think for that reason, that applies everywhere in the world. So to have a good understanding and base for criminal justice, I think is of interest to most people that, you know, want to pursue in this area. Okay. I think it, it's a very nice explanation why internationals should go and study this or take a peek, like what is happening happening out there with <laughs> with the law, with um, behavioral, with tons of things that are in a daily basis. Just I don't know with my neighbor, with my family, with everyone, right? Our program has a strong foundation of social justice as well, which I think is really unique and important. You know, understanding the impact of addictions, homelessness, poverty, um, and crime, you know, and, and the justice system. And how does the justice system work with other areas of our systems so for social work and community services and health? And work together. So we do a lot of volunteer work in our program, working out in the community. We do a lot of education series on social justice, understanding addiction, understanding homelessness, understanding a number of and mental health, as example. You know, many people in our criminal justice system um, have histories of abuse, addiction, mm -hmm. mental health challenges. So you can't study criminal justice just understanding criminal justice without understanding the impacts on individuals and why people are involved. Of course, it's, it's, it's a lot of work and 
being said that, how many time is needed for projects and homework after school? Well, I think, you know, on average, if you took a full-time course load, that includes some criminology courses, crim justice courses, it includes psychology courses, it includes like we have a broad array of courses that students must take. You know, on average, you know, I always like to say if it's a three credit course, like three hours a week, that you should always try to have two or three hours for studying that. That's sort of my golden rule. And sometimes you don't need that much, sometimes you do. Okay. With this information that you're you're sharing with us and taking account that they do have to make social service, as you comment earlier, our students are available or able to work at a part-time job and be successful? Yes, I, you know, I always get concerned if they try to work more than a part-time job. Like I think a part-time job is fine. Most of our students do that. But I would say there's some students that try to work more than say 10 hours or 15 hours a week. I think after that, if you're taking a full course load, it's a challenge. Okay. So sometimes we say, you know, maybe take three courses and just take longer to do it. If, if you're in that condition. Yeah, to make a balance, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely.